Welcome everybody to the Surrey uh, third annual Surrey Poetry Festival. Uh, as I said earlier, we'll be competing to some degree with the uh, singers outside, but they've been very kind and toned down the volume. So um, if you can't hear, let us know, we'll reject it. Um, so yes, a great pleasure to have uh, a great range of poets here today. We're going to start off with MJ Weller. You want to see helpfully perched on my stage there. So uh, just to the basic, some of the details of the books are, are in the, the festival program. But I'll just give you a quick, a quick introduction. So MJ Weller, uh, with cartoon art situated within 21st century visual poetics and Vince Poe lexicography, Michael is currently working on poetics of secondary world fictional narratives, familiar in fantasy, science fiction, fanfic, and comic book multiverses. He is also engaged with new regionally based DIY zine collectives. And I think that's a very modest way of talking about Mike's a very extensive um, work in both poetics and, and, and visual art and cartoon work, um, in which I think he is, if not one of a kind, certainly. <laughs> One of the best practitioners that I have ever come across. So, a great pleasure to have you here. So, Mike Weller. Thank you. Um, Esther Williams uh, died this week at the age of 91 years. Um, some years ago now, uh, I produced, uh, this was a particular time when uh, uh, there was a numerous female poets, and I did three, three titles. Um, Raynell Olson's Sharp Exhalations, <laughs> Andrea Brady, Poetry Lady, and Holly Pester Does It Better. Um, I was under the understanding that, that Raynell Olson uh, was, was linked in some way to Debbie Reynolds, and I <laughs> produced this piece, but it's actually it's Esther Williams, and Esther Williams features on the, the visual associations of Red Olson Sharp Exhalations and Andrea Brady Poetry Lady. I do produce uh, an enormous amount of prose, and I found that by extracting uh, pieces of uh, writing from from prose, uh, uh, something is transformed. Um, uh, space opera was done uh, 13 or 14 years ago, and with the, uh, the, the growth of uh, the idea of a bedroom tax, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I just thought I'd read this, this piece, and I'm actually describing it as militant narrative by poet jumping over a balcony to his death once again. I espy fictional Mike Weller. I look up at his window and another version of myself is scribbling away, busy doing nothing. No escape from a saint ball. Death is not an option in a hellhole where dwellers are dead on arrival. It's Mike's Yellow Fever. Um, this has been done in numerous editions. This was the uh, Blair and Brown edition, cartoon killer. Here's Mike's Yellow Fever when uh, you were first introduced to the idea of the, the internet and having a website. Uh, I'm going to read from the Brown Blair version. Um, and it's now available in a, 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 a zine uh, format because I'm, I'm actually struck you know, by the idea of just xeroxing anything you feel like putting down visually or verbally. <laughs> Mike Weber woke up one morning to find his world turned yellow. Soaping up for a shade, he didn't feel beard growth. Not even under his chin, where there was usually stubbly prickle. Short-sighted Mike saw a blurred yellow face staring back from the bathroom mirror. Placing his spectacles on his nose drew things into focus. 
The bathroom was one dimensional with a pixelated edge, as if the world was intended to have bold outlines, but Weller wasn't animated enough to make the perception complete. Mike dashed to his living room window. Peering out, the world was painted in flat primary colours. The sky was software sky blue, but the white clouds didn't wash true white. They didn't even denote absence of colour. The clouds were holes where darkness was trapped, a landscape without tone, shadow or hue. The balconies on the housing estate had been painted fuchsia in a regenerative effort to improve appearance. They had been painted the day before by contractors, Bob the Builders, in yellow hard hats. Weller made three of the bobs a pot of tea. Sri Lanka with thick dry leaves that made the liquid look car box maroon. Mike thought how tea looking he had made the brew in a matching set of Simpsons mugs. <laughs> then Weller realised the sky had been painted from the same palette as the balconies and the tea. He turned towards the high street. There was a picture of fuzz, blur, dots, blobs and wobbly lines. Mike needed air, a walk outside the simulation. The birds were singing sweet. The trees were lime green, greenish but not quite the right green. There was something not quite right about noises on the street either. A combination of bird yak, animal grunts, traffic sirens and crack bang words. Sound effects made by push button Microsoft battery operated children's toys. People walking about with key storybook characters. Well, they knew all about drawing techniques of caricature. He knew about colouring for mouse control and electronic animation. These people were yellow bill. Mike put his hands. They were yellow! <laughs> Yellow willow, he chuckled. Three fingers and a thumb, was it a joke? Has somebody spiked the water supply? Al-Qaeda? <laughs> the sports shop next to the opticians had a logo on the front, a zigzaggy mark that looked like an initial, a morphine, a phonemic acronym that yellow folks understood. Well, I noticed yellow people wearing the same mark on their tracksuits and shoes, on their caps and shoulder bags. He even saw it shaved into the hair and heads of small children. <coughs> Specs Express was situated next to the sports shop. Well, I caught himself in the reflection of its window, where spectacles with the ziggy zaggy mark were prominently displayed. There was a big bleached out black and white photo image of Kate Moss wearing a pair, mirror shades, lips, and lips of white front teeth, and long white hair. Mike's hair was both white and oil. He took his own spectacles off. He was wearing Harry Potter coat bottom bottle glasses. They had the mark on the inside too. He went up very close to the door. Looking straight back at him was an enormous pair of bulging white eyes. His bulging white eyes. Where did he place the spectacles? On his round yellow face, he looked again. There he stood in a silly, ill-fitting, normal wisdom style blue suit and not hit red tie. A continuous ringtone of raspberry voices and muppet melodies exploded in Weller's head. My mind thought critical, complex and creative responses. The answers were coming fast. He jotted them down in a Pokemon notebook. The jocks were marked. They spun together a tale of yellow fever. When Weller considered the possibility of telling the story, he had to think again. His articulations were lined up ready to go, and his mouth was sans tongue. He made utterances, but what came out of his mouth was 
Yeah, I thought that thing. 